playing piano from Spooky Campfire Tales. Da, da, dum, dum, blat. Charlie winced when his wife hit the wrong note on the piano for the 32nd time that day. He knew it was the 32nd time because he'd kept count as he went about his daily chores, cleaning the lighthouse, checking the supplies, mending the rowboat. Charlie and his wife Myrtle lived on a small island off the coast of Maine. Charlie was the lighthouse keeper, and he worked hard to keep everything up to date, spanking clean and in perfect order. No ships were going to wreck on the local reef while he was in command of the lighthouse. Myrtle kept house and made crafts to sell at the local onshore market during their once-a-month trip into town. Charlie and Myrtle had been married for almost ten years, and generally got along quite happily together, despite having no children. After she lost the first two, the doctor had told Myrtle that she wouldn't be able to have any more. Myrtle had taken the news stoically, and had refused to adopt a child from the orphanage when Charlie proposed the idea. Still, Charlie suspected she really did feel the lack of motherhood in her life, and that was probably the cause of her latest obsession. Charlie blamed himself, really. He should never have taken Myrtle to attend the concert with that highfalutin concert pianist came to town. But it was a special occasion, and everyone they knew was going. So Charlie and Myrtle went, too. And Myrtle decided right then and there that she wanted more than life itself to play the piano. Charlie tried to talk her out of it. No one in Myrtle's family was any good at music. Couldn't carry a tune in a bucket, the lot of them. In fact, when her Uncle Teddy played the fiddle, he cleared out the whole house. Even the neighbors went to town to escape the sound. Besides, Charlie argued, they couldn't possibly afford a piano. And how would they get it out to the island? Where would they fit one inside their small lighthouse? But Myrtle was as stubborn as her Uncle Teddy. If she couldn't find a dad gum way, she'd make one. Before Charlie could count to ten, she'd bought a cheap used piano that was always out of tune and hauled it over to the island on her brother Jamie's fishing boat. She would have kept it at the foot of their bed if Charlie hadn't drawn the line there. So Myrtle put Charlie's favorite rocking chair and table out in the woodshed and installed her piano in the main living space. From that day on, it was practice, practice, practice. Morning, noon, and night. Myrtle sat at the piano with her songbook open, plunking away at the keys. At first, there was not much to hear, and Charlie could ignore the sour sounds. But after a few months, she got better. And a lot worse. There were parts of her song that sounded pretty good, but she never, ever got that one line right. Da, da, dum, dum, blat, went the piano every time. Twelve weeks in a row, she'd been playing the same song without any improvement. Sometimes, she'd continue after the first blat, and that was even worse. Dum, dum, blat, blat, ding! There was nowhere on the small island that Charlie could go to get away from the sound, even when he sat in his favorite rocker out in the woodshed with cotton in his ears. Myrtle's new hobby was the source of much contention between husband and wife, who had never argued before. Now, they argued every day. At least try to learn another song, Charlie begged his wife. But Myrtle was stubborn. I ain't gonna learn another song until I've mastered this one. You gotta practice to get better, Charlie. Your Uncle Teddy practices his fiddle every Saturday night, Charlie snapped, and he hasn't gotten any better in 50 years. But Myrtle refused to listen. She just went back to her piano and started playing again. Da, da, dum, dum, blat. Dum, dum, blat, blat, ding! Charlie went upstairs to polish the light. He put wax in his ears, but even that did not completely muffle the sound. Things came to a head the day a nor'easter roared down on the island. Charlie and Myrtle were holed up together in the lighthouse hour after hour after hour. Charlie's chores were swiftly completed, and aside from regular checks on the light and a quick sweep of the beaches to make sure no ships were in danger, Charlie had nothing to do but sit and carve decoy ducks. And Myrtle played the piano. Hour after hour after hour. Da, da, dum, dum, blat. Dum, dum, blat, blat, ding! Around 4 p.m., Charlie leapt to his feet and shouted at his wife to stop playing the blasted song. Myrtle leapt to her feet and shouted that she was going to practice until she got it right. After a brief but fierce argument, Myrtle sat down at the piano and started playing again. Da, da, dum, dum, blat. Dum, dum, blat, blat, ding! Then something in Charlie snapped. 
A little while later, he felt bad about the way he chopped up the piano with his axe. After all, it was a valuable instrument. Try as he might, though, he couldn't feel bad about doing the same to Myrtle. Charlie put on his oilskins, took up a shovel, and dug a grave out back of the woodshed. He buried all the little pieces of Myrtle with all the little pieces of her piano. He figured she would have wanted it that way. Later that night, with the nor'easter raging and pounding the island and the lighthouse rattling and shaking wildly in the blast, Charlie got the best sleep he'd had in months. No more piano playing. Ever. The nor'easter blew itself out sometime the next morning. The island was peaceful and quiet once again, with no music at all save for the lap of the waves and the soughing of the wind through the pine trees. Charlie spent the rest of the day cleaning the blood off the floor and walls of the lighthouse. After that, he did his daily duties, moved his favorite rocking chair and table back into the main room, and carefully noted in the logbook the terrible tragedy that had befallen his wife during the storm. Myrtle, according to the log, had been swept out to sea by a huge wave while